Hey guys, welcome back to another Flesh and Blood video. This video is proudly brought to you by the House of Cards, the official sponsor of my stream. Be sure to check out the link in the description below for all of your Flesh and Blood needs. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the Victor deck that took me to my recent RTN win this past Sunday. I'm going to be talking about the deck, what changes I would make moving forward, and how I feel about the deck in the current metagame. But before we get into all that, we're going to talk about the round-by-round round report of my RTN and what it took to bring home the gold. I opened my gold foil from the RTN, and I created a YouTube short about it because it was the first gold foil I've ever won. If you guys want to see the video I created and see what gold foil I opened, you can find that video link in the description below. Round one was against a KO, and the game was super close, but I think my opponent fell victim to the trap of playing into the Guardian-style play, where we were playing this mid-rangey game back and forth. Um, you know, both of us were blocking six and then like, you know, throwing our cards back and forth. And I think Guardian just plays better at that, especially the Victor deck, because there are so many turns where Victor can block six to nine and then still throw eight at you. And the best thing you can do is throw six normally. So I think that gave me a big advantage in that game. Round two, I played against an Azalea. And this game was really interesting because my opponent actually put the game in a winning position for them. They were up two points of life, which I think is a kind of a big deal. And I didn't really have anything like saved up like we were just playing our four card hands back and forth and I had kind of like fallen victim to like the Azalea style gameplay. And so the play that happened was the, the thing that shifted the game in my favor is that my opponent actually played a Codex of Frailty which allowed me to get a Spinal Crush back from my arsenal. I have a Seismic Surge floating already. Keep this in mind. I discard one of my blues. So now the three cards in my hand are Trounce. Tear Asunder, and some blue, it doesn't matter. And then I have a Spinal Crush in my arsenal with a Frailty. So I block with the Trounce, I win the first one, put it to the bottom, and then I win the second one with a blue Thunk. So I create two Might Tokens, so then I have three blues, one of which is a Tear Asunder, I have a Vigor, a Surge, and a Spinal Crush. I was able to throw Spinal Crush for 11 Dominate from the arsenal, which was insane with the Tear Asunder text. So it bought me my life lead back and it also bought me a full turn cycle. And from there, like I kind of just had to like outvalue my opponent the rest of the game. Round three, I played the Victor Mirror, which is really interesting because I think that my opponent's deck was actually set up in a better way to play the Victor Mirror um, as opposed to mine. So in my list, I was running two staunch response, which I think bought me some real value there. But my opponent was able to squeak out the game at the very end with a Macho Grande. It was probably one of the best Guardian Mirrors I've played in a long time. My opponent played it super clean. There were multiple times when it felt like I had the tempo and I was ahead and all I had to do was keep applying pressure. And my opponent kept finding ways to swing the game back. And like it was just a super good game and I really enjoyed it a whole bunch. But I did end up taking the L here. Round four was against Max and my opponent was on like a more like hyper combo Max like flipping into the Mechanoid. My opponent flipped into the Mechanoid on like turn four and had the seven pieces under their Mechanoid. Now, I was like at 30 to 35 when they actually flipped, so I wasn't very low. But what ended up happening is my opponent attacked like two times, so they only had five pieces left. Um, and I was only able to take a few damage because I was blocking out. And then they went for a double high octane turn where they went all in on the combo. And I had every single piece of my armor left to block with. So I actually ended up being able to crown away a card and then block with, and I want to trounce. I want to trounce and crown away a card. So I was able to block with six cards in every piece of my equipment, and they still put me to 13 from 30, which is kind of crazy. But I think my opponent wins the game if they don't attack me with the mechanoid the first two times because that would have been six more points that I wouldn't have really been able to do anything about, and they would have just pushed through some more damage, and I would have been like sub five. And I think from there they could have leaked over the damage, but I ended up taking out the win and was able to fatigue them because my opponent attacked those two times a little too early there. Round five was against a Leviah, and the Leviah matchup is super tight as it is anyway. Our game was really close, and I almost lost. Uh, my opponent made a mistake or two along the way, which I don't blame them for. Leviah is one of the hardest decks to play in the meta game right now, but Leviah's end game is so strong that I was actually, I almost lost the game just because my opponent was able to swing the game back and like try to put it into their favor. But thankfully I was able to close it out in round five. Round six, I was able to squeak out a win against a Bravo. Um, so four and one, I was locked for top eight. Like we were just kind of playing for seeding at this point. I was actually playing against a fatigue Bravo. The game went to... Like, to the letter of time, we finished the game in the final turns of the match um, in Swiss. 
Um, it was a really close game and a very good game, but I think Victor's actually just able to value out Fatih Bravo over the course of the game. When they're pitching cards to play their staunch responses for, you know, 8, 9, and 10, they're losing a lot of tempo that way because, like, they're not taking damage, but they're also not attacking you for anything or really doing anything offensive. So you being able to, like, block 6 and then being able to throw your 4 freight attacks, I think buys you a lot of advantage and ekes out some points over the course of the game. The first round of top 8, I ended up playing against a Katsu. Now, the Katsu matchup used to be free if you were Victor because Trounce and Test of Strength just gave you the block that you needed to keep cards in your hand and still throw a lot of value. Now that Katsu is playing Mask of the Pouncing Links and they are on the like, hey, we're going to throw triple and quad bonds at you two to three times a game, it's become a lot harder to make all of that happen and to like play the value game as Victor. So you really have to pick your spots and try to do it the best way that you can. My opponent was able to put together two really good turns and they really put me on the back foot. But after their second big turn, I was still able to keep a couple of cards and throw a debilitate at them. And so like being able to find that value like really worked out. Now I have to say on the second big turn, I blocked with a Clash of Vigor, revealing a Golden Sun in one, which gave me the gold and drew me a card. I'm going to be honest, I think that really bailed me out of the game. I think I was in a spot where I was potentially going to lose until I actually flipped the Golden Sun and got super lucky because that gave me the extra card to block that I needed and kept my life total just high enough to be able to take tempo back and end up fatiguing my opponent in top eight. Top four, I'm playing against the Levia again. It's the same Levia from the Swiss rounds. We played almost an identical game, except at the end, I was able to throw a debilitate and they were going to take the damage of pretty much whatever I did if it was irrelevant because they had the life, they, they were at 13 or 12, I think, I can't remember, and they had the life to be able to take 10 or take 8 or anything, but the, the 8 and the crush effect from Debilitate was actually just enough to where they could not block with any cards at the end of the game to stop the crush effect and still play out their game plan, and that 2 points ended up being just enough to keep me alive so that I can continue to play and actually run them out of cards and like push damage through to win the game there. Last but not least, the finals. The finals is again the same fatigue bravo that I played in the very last round of Swiss. So at this point in time, like this game was super grindy, it was super clean, and like my I tip my hat to my opponent. Like he played super well. Like the game was really good, and like it was a great guardian game. At the end of the game, my opponent has more equipment than me, and I am up on I am up on life but I am actually down one card in the matchup because of his second remembrance. So at this point in time, I throw, um, I throw a, a debilitate and I have two floating. My opponent blocks with three cards and some equipment to stop the pummel because he does not have a D react at this point in the game and says, if you have it, I'm dead here. So my opponent during game one for context here had never seen the second staunch response for my deck. I had arsenaled the second staunch response late into the first cycle during the first game, and they had never actually seen the second staunch response. So my opponent didn't know if I had a second staunch response or a third pummel, and they played like, if this is a pummel, I just lose here. Now, this is interesting to me because I don't know many people that would play one staunch response, but I get where my opponent was coming from because playing around the third pummel, like, I think Victor is more likely to play three pummels than to play two staunch responses. Now, my list was on the two staunches because I think it's more balanced, but I, I understand my opponent's decision, and they just decided to play around, if this happens, I lose the game, period. And I think that was a pretty smart play, because once they do that, from there, like I was just able to close the game out. It's unfortunate for them that it ended up winning me the game, the decision they made, because I did just have another staunch response in my arsenal, and then a turn later, they ended up throwing a Starstruck, and I was just able to pitch two cards and cover it up, and then throw E Strike for seven, and then we're back into this like weird game where I'm just now like pitching and we're playing the hammers back and forth. Except now I'm up on cards, and so I'm just gonna win the fatigue game if we're just throwing hammer back and forth over the rest of the game. So I was actually able to close it out. It was a really weird play, um, and like I'm not gonna say that what my opponent did was wrong, but like I, I understand why they played around it, but. I don't I don't know like looking back on it it's hard to say what I would have done because losing the game on the spot to something that your opponent may or may not have is a really big risk to take this is it guys this is the list that I went eight and one with and I was able to bring home the gold now let's start by looking at the equipment up here at the top and let's just work our way down so Ormegis is a great shield because it also doubles as gold balance of justice is probably the best new headpiece we've gotten since crown of providence 
Civic Steps is really good, but it does require some timely use so that you don't actually get punished by giving other people the Quicken token. Gauntlets of Iron Will is actually really good into Ninja. It plays really well with breaking scales and it can help stop some things like that. Tectonic Plating, I feel like Tectonic Plating needs no introduction. The only argument here that a lot of people have is that they play Tunic over that, and I think that that's a different build and a different style of the list. And then Miller's Grindstone, this is like one of my favorite Guardian weapons I've ever seen. Miller's Grindstone is a lot of fun, and I think it gives you a lot of value to be able to deck build in a certain way. Now, when we scroll down here, we're going to talk about the rest of our equipment. Down here at the very bottom, I have Anothos in the list. I really like Anothos. Like, I think like Sledge has a lot of value in the matchup, but if you're on Tectonic Plating, I think you should be playing Anothos. If you're not, if you're on Tunic, Sledge is definitely the way to go, but if you're only on Tectonic Plating, I think Anothos is best. Crown of Providence is for all the matchups you don't want Balance of Justice in. I have all of those matchups listed in my matchups, my cyborg guide, like the matchups that I have set up for everything, so you can see when I run Crown of Providence and when I run Balance of Justice. And Arcane Lantern. Arcane Lantern is for Dramai. Honestly, like, you bring it in against Kano because, like, you need, like, the AB1 to try and do something, but <clears throat> I'm hoping to dodge Kano, if I'm being honest. Um, and Arcane Lantern is great into Dromai because it actually cannot be destroyed by um, Tumultai, and I think a lot of people were playing Null Room Boots, but Arcane Lantern is the tech that I'm going to be sticking with permanently here. Starting with our cards here, we're going to look at Chokeslam. Chokeslam is a great card, not only because it serves the value of being a 4 for 8 or a 2 card 8 with a Seismic Surge in play, but it also gives you the value of being really good into Rhinar against their Blood Rush turns and KO and Levia. You get a lot of value in those matchups, and it also has some play into Katsu when they're looking to play um, Art of War or Ancestral Harmony. So Chokeslam is probably one of the best places I've seen it in the meta in a long time. Next is Command and Conquer. Command and Conquer is like kind of like a little bit of like a, I want to say a little like a flex slot, but it's not really in my opinion. Command and Conquer is really important because if you arsenal it, it gives you the ability to block 9 or with a Trounce of Test of Strength. You can block 12 and then you can throw Command and Conquer still. But a lot of people have swapped out Command and Conquers and added in um, like Righteous Cleansings in the main deck. Some people are playing... <clears throat> Red Macho Grandes in the main deck. Some people are... I Somebody told me the other day they were playing three main deck Pulverize just for the Guardian Mirror, and I think that's really interesting because on turn zero, you can heave it, but I think that the Command and Conquer spot is the flex slot for looking to play cards like Pulverize. Um, like, I think that just looking at the rest of the deck, I think everything else is kind of necessary for certain matchups. Next is Debilitate. I like Debilitate because, again, it's another 4 for 8. It's another 2 card 8 that I'm a really big fan of with a Seismic Surge. Um, the Crush Effect can be really relevant because this can be a 2 card 10 if it crushes. I mean, Debilitate's just a great card. It blocks 3, and it serves all the functions that we need it to in the deck. E-Strike. This is copies. Like, I'm running 8 Go Again cards in my list, and E-Strike is phenomenal. It's great into the Guardian Mirror because instead of throwing Hammer for 7, you get to have a breakpoint point or throwing hammer for six, you get to have a break point of seven here with the E-Strike. You can draw a card if you know what's on top to arsenal something. Like, you have a lot of, like, really good value. This also works as a go-again card into, like, dash, um, like OG dash. Like, it's really good because you get to, like, have more go-again attacks here. So I think E-Strike serves a really, like, versatile spot that I'm a really big fan of. Prime to Fight is something that some people have stuck with and some people have went away from. I think if you're really looking to, like, utilize Trounce against, like, um, the ninja decks and against like the warrior decks i think prime to fight gives you a lot of value if you win a uh, trounce and then you throw prime to fight as a two card 11 you were able to block nine and throw 11 which is absolutely insane because it's a 20 point turn cycle off of uh off of like a four or five card hand so like you just you're getting so much value but prime to fight does like lose some points for you in my opinion in the guardian matchup and like the brute matchup because it's really not that great like this is a three card nine in the brute matchup and the guardian matchup so I like running two Prime to Fights because it gives me more play into Warrior and into the Ninja decks. Spinal Crush, I feel like this card needs no introduction. This card is a staple of pretty much every Guardian deck that's out there. And then Test of Strength. This is a block four that also has a lot of value to win you a gold and give you an extra card. Being able to block four and still draw a card is absolutely insane. Test of Strength is an auto-include in every Victor deck. Next up we have Thunderquake. You'll notice I'm only on two red Thunderquakes and I'm on the three blues. Now, I kind of... 
I cut one of the Red Thunderquakes to make room for Sink Belows in my original list and what I wanted to be doing, but I think playing two Red Thunderquakes is really good. Um, we could cut one Prime Defy and play three Red Thunderquakes, but I think that I like the, the two and two flex here. Um, Thunderquake is a great card. I love heaving this card. It's absolutely fantastic, and it just serves the role of a three card 10 um, in most matchups where I really like it, or at worst case, it blocks for three. Trounce. This card is probably like the biggest, newest card from heavy hitters that like really shines in Victor. This card is fantastic and gives you the ability to draw cards and make tokens and just like get so much value here. Um, this is kind of like if you win a trounce and you have CNC pummel set up, you kind of get to like create your own tunic counter for the turn with the vigor resource. So like you have some options there, but trounce is absolutely insane. It is worth noting that I cut some copies of it into the brute matchups because I would rather just be on more sink belows and be on less trounces. Because if you give your opponents the Trounce tokens, it's really bad. It can be really bad for you. The Golden Sun. The Golden Sun is an awesome card. 10 Overpower is fantastic. Um, if you have Terra Sunder and the Golden Sun and a Surge or like a Vigor token, you can actually play what I've been calling We Have Crippling Crush at Home. Somebody called it that in an RTN at the first week, and I thought that was really funny. So I've been calling it that when I stream. Um, being able to pitch a blue to play Terra Sunder and then being able to pitch another blue to play the Golden Sun to come in for 11 Dominate is absolutely insane. So like this card is great. It has a lot of value into a ton of matchups. It's good at really closing out games um, late game against like other Guardian decks and it's really good at closing out games against uh, Ninja. It's not so good at closing out games against Warrior because they play so many reactions, but normally like a third one late second cycle or in the third cycle, the Golden Sun can try to close the game out for you because you've seen most of their reactions at that point during the game. Buckling Blow. Like we're not playing reds of this, we're just playing blue. It's a popper. It pitches for three. Like it's just like Buckling Blow is a good card that pops and does a lot of things here. Clash of Vigor is a card that like I've been debating whether I want to play or not. I do like Clash of Vigor because it does play into your chance to win clashes in some level. Now, against Brute decks, this is pretty much a loss. Against Guardian decks, like flipping this over is a loss. But if you flip, if your opponent flips over a D-React and you flip over a Clash of Vigor, you're still going to win. So taking this out for a different blue would actually cut your chances of winning because we'd probably be adding a like non-attack value card. So you can win clashes with Clash of Vigor. But I do like this card. I think it's pretty good. Um, Cranial Crush, again, like this card is a, a three card eight at blue, which is absolutely insane. And the text has really relevant text. Like the text is really relevant into um, Brute decks who are looking to play Blood Rush or people who are looking to play Art of War. Like I think this card is a lot better than most people think. Disable is again another staple of pretty much all Guardian decks, but I do really like this card. Um, being able to like disrupt your opponent's arsenal for like if they have to block four here, and I think at blue, this serves a great purpose. It also plays around some of the Triumph cards at being a seven, so that's pretty cool. Herald of Triumph, just to clarify there. Macho Grande, this card's awesome. This is your finisher. This is your closer. Again, a staple of every Guardian deck, but this is your finisher. This is what closes the game. On turn zero, you can push through dominated damage if you want to in certain situations. It's not always correct, but sometimes you can. I love Terra Sunder. This was not an original addition in the deck. So normally, at first, when this get deck came out, we were playing Clash of Might instead of Terra Sunder. But I think Terra Sunder has so much value with Debilitate, Choke Slam, occasionally Spinal Crush, and you could even get in there with a Golden Sun at times. Um, Terra Sunder just has so much value, and being able to Terra Sunder an Othos in the Guardian Mirror also gives you a huge leg up at the end of the game when they don't have any equipment or D-Reacts left. <clears throat> and Thunk. This card is also, since Heavy Hitters release, been an auto-include into every single um, Guardian deck. It's a popper that creates a might if you win a clash. Most people are playing it just as an extra popper. Like, even Bravo's playing this card just because it's an extra popper at blue. So, I think this card is really good, and I think that we'll see this as, like, a main staple inclusion moving forward in all other Guardian decks. Looking at our sideboard here, we have a lot of the usual suspects. Pulverize is an insanely good card into the Guardian Mirror, and I actually run it into Rhinar because most of the Brutes are wanting to go second to try and take tempo from you. So if you're able to heave this on turn zero, like, man, that's insane. Being able to make a surge and then heave this gets you so much value. Like, you're just able to, like, really put yourself in a good position very early game. Pummel also needs no introduction as we're looking at Pummel here. Like, it's great. Played with Command and Conquer very often. I'm only on two because one felt like it wasn't enough, um, and three felt like it was way too many. So I'm a pretty big fan of two, but I do have to admit playing this card, playing Pummel without Tunic is does feel bad sometimes because it is a lot worse um, in pretty much every situation. So Pummel like doesn't really feel that good to me. 
Um, but if you're on Tunic, I think Pummel is an auto-include. But even without Tectonic Plating, I still think you're including Pummel because of the value you can get from it. Sink Below. Sink Below has been around forever. It blocks four. It helps you into aggro decks. Not much to say about it here. Staunch Response. Now, this is a card I want to talk about for a minute. If you have been playing Bravo or you played Oldham for a long time, like playing Staunch Response was like very smart because Staunch Response let you block these huge attacks, but you're also on like 36 to 40 blues in the Oldham and in the Bravo deck. The Victor deck only plays like 30 blues. My list plays 30 blues. I've seen some people who are playing like 32 main deck. I've seen, I saw a list the other day, somebody was playing 29. A lot of people are on 30 though. So looking at 30 blues, this pretty much blocks for seven unless it's second cycle. So like against Bravo, you have to pitch stack this and that can kind of hurt you sometimes because you get into a bad spot where you have to give up tempo late game to get this card into your arsenal. It's just, it can be awkward at times. So I honestly, like while Staunch Response had a lot of value for me into Fatigue Bravo in both of my games, I do think I'm going to cut this moving forward. Um, I just think that like with the lack of blues, this can be really awkward and you can really get hampered by some of your hands here. So Staunch Response looked a little awkward over the weekend. Zealous Belting, like nobody likes this card, but you have to play it because you need go again attacks. I really like Zealous Belting. I think it plays really well with a lot of the four for eights. Being able to pitch a blue and throw Zealous and then pitch another blue and throw Debilitate or Choke Slam without actually having access to a Seismic Surge for the turn is insane. And, I mean, the floor of this card is make a Surge, throw it, and then throw Hammer. Like, so, I mean, Zealous Belting is a great card. People sleep on it. Like, people don't like to play it, but I'm actually a really big fan. Rouse the Ancients is the worst go again card in the deck, in my opinion. Now, Rouse the Ancients is like, don't get me wrong, Rouse the Ancients is a great card and it does a lot of good things, but you have to arsenal this card like early game or you have to like have the tempo and draw it in a hand where you can just play it. Now, it does work out that way sometimes where you can just play it and be like, okay, well, here it is. I have it. I drew it at the right time and that's great, but like I'm only on two with this card because I think it can be awkward. Um, it's also only a two block, so... Not a, I don't know. Like, I think Rouse the Ancients is the worst going in card that Guardian has access to. We just talked about what my RTN list looked like from Sunday. This is the list that I've updated and I've changed and I've added some, moved some cards around and I've took, taken a couple cards out. So looking at this, this is what I'm going to be playing moving forward. Now, for what it's worth, you guys can find a link in the description below to both decks, both the old deck and the new updated deck. So looking at this list, when we start at the top, you'll see that pretty much everything is the same on the first two lines. And then as we move down just a little bit, you'll notice that in the main deck, 58 cards that I have, again, everything is still looking exactly the same. I did not make any changes to the main deck 58. The one thing that I do want to consider playing is cutting Command and Conquers and playing three main deck Pulverizes um, just to like have the ability to do it on turn zero because you get so much big potential from that. But I do like Command and Conquer and I think that's going to stay in my list. Now, as we move to the sideboard, this is where you'll notice some changes. I'm still in two Pulverize in the sideboard, which would change if I added them to the main deck, obviously. We have two Pummels in the side. You'll notice I'm now on three Sink Belows, and there's zero copies of Staunch Response. So I cut the two copies of Staunch Response, and I added Sink Below, and I think that I like that better because Staunch Response plays pretty awkwardly with the amount of blues you have in Victor, and Sink Below plays really well at filtering hands and giving you, it also gives you help against Dominate into Azalea and Bravo. Um, so I think that like, Sink Below is a great card to have three of um, in your deck. The other slot that I cut was the second staunch response, and I actually added in Titan's Fist. Now, I added in Titan's Fist because I think it plays really well into the Brute matchups. If you are playing Miller's Grindstone into the Brute matchups, then I think that the first time you lose a Clash with a Hammer, and there will come a time when it happens, your Hammer is now for three. And while I'm not going to say that your Hammer is worthless the rest of the game, it is much worse. Significantly, significantly worse you are in a much spot, much worse spot the rest of the game just because your hammer is now on three. And I think that having the shield is so much better than having a Nothos in those matchups. So I'm really not a big... I, I think Titan's Fist like solves a lot of the problems that I want here. Now, one of the things that like somebody asked me the other night when I was talking about this is why not just cut Miller's Grindstone and play Titan's Fist in every matchup because like what are you really gaining off of Grindstone? I hear that question. It makes a lot of sense for the most part until we get to one matchup. Dromai. When we get to Dromai, I think you have to have the Grindstone. Grindstone is always a three for four. It does not matter what happens. Like, you're not really going to lose a clash, and if you do, you can clash again with the shield or do something else, because you're going to block with the shield pretty early. The chances of you losing a clash in a Dromai are very small. 
Like there's not a great chance of that happening. It can, but there's not a great chance of it. So when we're looking at the grindstone, it's always going to be a three for four. So if you pitch, like if you pitch like an E strike and like a couple of like if you pitched E strike, E strike tests of strength into like into the hammer, like I don't know why you would ever do that, but I'm just throwing out ideas here. If you pitch that or if you pitch the Clash of Vigor, it could end up actually being only three with the Titan's Fist. So like a great example is like, let's say that like you had to use all three of your poppers and there's still a mirror guy on board. If the only card left in your hand is a Clash of Vigor, your Titan's Fist can't kill the mirror guy and you are now up a creek in a really bad spot. So I think that having Miller's Grindstone for the drum my matchup is extremely important and I think serves a really good purpose there. Um, but other than that, I really like Titan's Fist into like the brute matchups. And I'm still on tectonic plating in Anothos just because I'm a big Anothos fan, to be honest. Guys, let me know in the comments down below what you think about my list. If you think there's something I'm missing from the deck or maybe one of the matchups isn't tuned quite right, let me know. I'd like to hear about any thoughts or opinions you guys have on the Victor deck. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys.